Very often you want to know the bulk composition of an object, a component, or an entire rock. Now in particular in cosmochemistry, we often have only two-dimensional sections of the sample we are looking at. So we need to determine this bulk composition from this section. And here I want to explain how this is done. Now as an example, I chose a control here, which is clearly false colored. So in blue is the pyroxene, in red the olivine, and in green the feldspar. I will mainly use the colors, it's a little more straightforward. Now what we know about this chondrule is the element composition of the various components. So say for example the silicon composition of blue, red, and of green. In addition, of course, we can easily count the pixels of each color. So how many pixels in blue, red, and green. And from this we can calculate a modal abundance. So what's the modal abundance of blue, red, and green? Then in combination of the modal abundance and the element composition, we can calculate a bulk composition. Now let's see how this is done. Let's say for example that um, blue, from blue there are about 200 pixels. From red there are 1000 pixels and from green there are 100 pixels. So in total there are 1300 pixels. Now when we want to know the contribution of silicon in pyroxene to the entire chondrule, we need to calculate the fraction of pyroxene in the entire chondrule. The fraction of pyroxene is calculated by taking the 200 pixels of pyroxene and dividing this by the total of the pixels, so by 200 plus 1000 plus 100. Now this is then the fraction of the um, pyroxene. So this would be, for example, um, 0.15, so about 14.4% is the fraction of pyroxene. Now I want to know what is the contribution of the silicon in the pyroxene to the entire chondrule. And for this we multiply this fraction with the silicon concentration in the pyroxene, which I assume to a random 28%. So 28% times this fraction is then the silicon concentrate or the silicon concent contribution of the pyroxene to the entire chondrule, which is about 3.1%. Um, so to write this a little bit more simple, I put a 20 up here, which of course gives the same result. Then I calculate the contribution of the red of the olivine to the entire chondrul and add this to what's there already. So say in red there's 25% silicon and there are a thousand pixels. And then I add the contribution from the green from the feldspar, so let's say there's 40% times 100 pixels, and then add all this together, and then the total is about 25.4%. So this is the bulk composition of the silicon in the entire chondrule. So this is in principle how this works. Now first I'd like to make this, um, this formula here a little simpler. As you can see the denominator is the same, uh, is always the same, which means I can um, put all these together into one nominator here. So I copy these various nominators and add them here together. So I don't need this anymore. And if I execute this, of course, I get the same result, 25.4% silicon. Now there's one bit we forgot so far. The various phases, all in pyroxene feldspar have various densities. And these need to be included. So let's, um, let's see what this, what this makes with some um, random atypical numbers just to make this more clear. So in case of blue here, there are 200 blue pixels. Now let's say these have a density of 1. Then these 1000 pixels of red say these have a density of 2, which, mean, which means two pixels actually sort of fit in one blue pixel. So, in, so actually they are not 1000 red pixels, but 2000 red pixels because of the high density they are closer together they are in the same space there are more of these not in the picture but of course but there are this is the higher density so there must be a 2 times 1000 so there are actually basically 2000 pixels 
because they are so dense. We of course need to make this as well in the denominator that there are 2000 pixels. So we need to write down here as well. And then for the green ones, for the feldspar, say there's a density of 3, so we have in fact 300 pixels. And the same down here, there should also be 300 pixels. And the same is actually true for the blue pixels. There's not 200, but 1 times 200, and the same down here. Now real density values are more like between 2.7 and 3.4, but this fits the, the purpose here. So if we execute this, this will change the result a little bit to 26.4. And this is what's called a density correction. So this is actually now a modal recombination calculation, including density correction. All right, now let's formalize this a little bit more here. And I'll uh, do this down here. Now here in the denominator, what we have is here, this is the concentration. I put in here concentration of, the, of blue of the first phase times the density of the first phase times the pixel, and the pixel is the modal abundance, which is usually a capital X. So, oops, so down here is then X1, and this plus, and then there's C2 times D2 times, times X2, plus, and so on. And in the denominator, there's here the density times X. So there's then basically D1 times x1 plus d2 times x2 and so on. And I want to formalize this in the last step into this is basically um, nothing else than a sum because we sum these um, multiplication terms here. So uh, Sorry, let's do this again here. So I don't need all this extra bits here. So I only have here then a sum of nope, a sum of C times D times X. So this would be the nominator, and then this is divided by the sum of c, uh, the sum of d times x. And this then is the formula for the modal recombination, including density correction. So here we get, uh, get the bulk composition of this chondral, for example. Now what happens if you want to know not only the bulk composition, the, the elemental bulk composition, but also the isotope bulk composition? So what we need to do then, so this should be um, isotope. We need to add up here times the isotope composition. Now let's assume that, so if we replace the concentration by isotope composition, maybe let's, let's put it like that first. So instead of concentration, we now have the isotope composition. But now what happens if there are two phases Say the, uh, the isotopes is iron isotopes. Now, if you have two phases and they have the same ice iron composition, it's fine. But assume that the two phases have different isotope compositions. So maybe one phase has 10 weight percent iron, the second has 20 weight percent iron. Then, of course, the phase with um, 20 weight percent iron will contribute uh, um, more to the isotope composition than the one with 10 percent in particular twice as much. So we need to, in the same way as we did the density correction, we now need to make basically a concentration correction. And it's quite similar, we multiply with the concentration in the nominator and by the concentration now also in the denominator. And then we have the modal recombination formula including density and concentration correction for isotopes. And these are now then the two formulas, we need to calculate bulk compositions of components, objects, entire sections or whatsoever into D. And this is the uh, model recombination.